Hey everybody, let's talk resume writing. If you're writing your resume, let's look at some example resumes, find out what works, what doesn't work, and what we can learn from how to write a great resume. Let's dive in. Okay, let's go to the internet right now. Let's pick some resumes at random here, and uh, let's take a look and do a little bit of a roast here. Uh, not that I'm expecting to totally trash these. Um, okay, here we go. Here is a resume. And it's a two column resume. Now, this is a great design option if you are uh, starting out. You got like a column in green. They've even got two different colors that help separate it. Uh, you've got a green column here with a knockout writing. So the writing's in white. And uh, this is great for highlighting keywords. Okay. Now, in this case, what they've done is they put their contact information here. Now, they've put their education here. That's not the worst thing in the world. Uh, but they've got skills down here in this weird little graph uh, chart here, or whatever this is. Um, okay, and then on the main section, they've got an executive summary of some kind. And then they've got their work experience. Now, I think some things definitely work in this resume. I think that uh, it's great that it's two columns. It's great that they've got their work experience right up front. Okay, that's awesome. Um, it's easy to read. However... I think that they've misused some of the real estate uh, in terms of what they've chosen to put in different places here. Uh, what I would use, first of all, I take out these little charts, okay, because don't rate yourself, don't grade yourself. Uh, this is entirely arbitrary and therefore useless in the eyes of a recruiter who is looking at this, okay? Uh, instead of this, use it to highlight some of the key things that they are looking for, okay? Now, how do you know what they're looking for? Well, here we get into learning point number one for this video, okay? And that is this. Recruiters don't care about you. Just remember that, they don't care about you. Now, this is what I mean, okay? A lot of people, they do their resume and they look at their resume like it's like a trophy. You know, here's all my greatest accomplishments, here's all the stuff I've done that I'm really proud of, right? I've worked across all these different industries, all these different unrelated types of jobs, but I'm putting them all on the resume because I'm proud of them. These are all the things that I've done, right? Now, the recruiter looks at the resume, okay? This is what they see. And the resume obviously is for a specific job. It's for their job. And in their job posting, they have said, we're looking for someone who has these specific things, okay? So when they look at your resume, you're one of 100 resumes, 200 resumes. They don't have a lot of time. They might have only a few seconds to look at each resume and decide, is this promising enough to read more or is this a non-starter? Okay. So if they look at your resume and they spend 10 seconds looking at it and they don't see all the things that they're interested in, they're probably going to move to the next resume and not give yours a second glance, okay? So that's the big thing. So therefore, you should have prominently featured the things that they've said they're looking for, okay? And what better place to do it than if you got this little column here that could be used as an excellent place to put some keywords, put some uh, quick facts about you, okay? That echo exactly what they've said they're looking for. That's what I would use this column for not putting in secondary information like your GPA. Nobody cares about your GPA here when you've got all this work experience, right? That's how it goes. So the only thing they care about is like you have, you have this degree and it's even taking me time to find out what the degree is. Uh, Master of Science in Global Fashion Enterprise. So there you go. I would, and maybe University of Texas, I would leave everything else off there. It's all wasted. It's all secondary information, okay? Uh, now, if you look at what they've got here under experience, you've got some bullet points, which is good, okay? This text is on the small side. I would not use text smaller than this, and even this is like pretty small. I would not go this small. I know you've got a lot to say, but you've got to learn to summarize, okay? You've got to learn to draw out the most important points and take everything else out, okay? Because only if you were like a finalist, you know, you're the you're the, you're in the last 3 candidates that, you know, has gone to the second or third round of interviews, 
only at that point will anybody really be looking at like everything you've written all the way down here right um all they want to know is do you have the basics do you have the keywords and uh if so they'll probably bring you in for an interview and then your resume at that point is much less relevant the only thing they care about that uh from that point onwards is what were you like at the interview okay so a lot of this is kind of wasted now I'm just taking a glance at this and I see that they've listed duties. For example, ensured timely delivery of merchandise through consistent communication. Okay, they analyzed this, they collaborated with these people. That's great, but there's no accomplishments on here. Like I've explained in my last video uh, in this kind of this series, accomplishments are quantifiable and they're quantifiable in two ways, either in percentage percentage change like improvement or in terms of money in terms of currency how much money did you save or how much money did it make okay <coughs> excuse me so i'm not seeing any of that really on here okay so that would be an issue here's another resume let's see if i can make this one a little bit bigger <coughs> <coughs> Okay, uh, oh, this just says resume template, but yeah, this, once again, this looks quite dated. This is, uh, it even says May 1990 on there. So yeah, let's go to another one. That looks kind of dated. Here we go. Here's another two column resume. Uh, and if you notice, they got their name up here and then they have a tagline, interpreter. This is awesome. Always put your name and always put a tagline under your name. Who are you? Okay, so if you're applying for a job as an interpreter, it's great if they say, I'm Arnold Duncan and I'm an interpreter, right? Perfect. That summarizes you to a T. Sometimes people's experience is a little bit varied and it's not super clear who you are. You might have an engineering degree, you might have worked as a cashier for six months and then you worked as a design intern and then you worked as a manufacturing technician. So who are you? Are you a manufacturing professional? Are you a design professional? Who are you? Are you an engineer? It's not clear, is it, right? So that's where the tagline comes in. It's great to be able to say, you know, Arnold Duncan, professional engineer, something like that. Then you know who you're dealing with. Uh, once again, I would take out all these sort of graphic kind of things. Okay, like, like, what does this even mean? MS Office, this is on a sliding scale, a relative scale. So I know that in terms of ST, SDL Trado Studio, you score about a 30% in Microsoft Office. That doesn't really tell me anything real. Okay. Um, but once again, they're not using this to draw out any kind of, uh, you know, keywords or requirements that the employer said they're looking for okay um now second point i'd like to make this is a great transition to the second thing i'd like to say in this video second thing of two and that is that in addition to recruiters not caring about you okay the other thing in general is that recruiters don't know anything really about the job they're recruiting for okay they don't create the job posting and they don't decide whether they hire someone that's given to them all the job requirements, you know, the qualifications necessary, what people would like to see, the duties that this job will have, that's all given to them. So imagine this situation. Imagine that like you're a plumber, okay? And I've said, I'm going to give you a job. I'm going to make you a recruiter and you're going to recruit uh, candidates that would be contenders to fill this software development job. Okay, you're a plumber. What the hell do you know about software development? Not much, right? So the only thing you can really tell is when you start receiving resumes, if this person that sent you a resume, if they're a good contender for the job, one would expect that all the things in the job posting that we've said we're looking for, you should have said those somewhere on your resume. Right. So if we've said that, you know, we need someone that can do HTML, we need someone that can do Python, we need someone that's got three years experience with, uh, you know, in a systems admin role. And, uh, you know, they can also, 
do uh, like develop in C sharp or something like that. I mean, I don't know. I'm not a developer, but if that's what they've said, you're a plumber. You don't know, you know, if someone knows this, they might know that you don't know any of that. So if you see a resume and it doesn't mention C sharp, it doesn't mention Python. It doesn't mention systems and men, those words, and it doesn't mention, uh, whatever the other thing was, chances are you're going to say, no, I'm, this is not going to make my short list, this resume. I'm going to put this aside. Okay. That's kind of like recruiters. Recruiters are not, if they're hiring for a software developer job, they don't know anything about software development. So remember that if they've said in the job posting that they're looking for these four things, you should have those four things prominently featured in your resume. So when we go back to our resume here, let's say this was an applicant for the role I just described. Wouldn't it be great if right over here it said, you know, Python, like two years in Python coding, uh, five years as system admin, you know, experience with HTML, you know, like whatever, right? So the recruiter who doesn't know any what any of these words mean, they say, ah, okay, this person seems to show promise. They seem to have everything we're looking for, okay? So that's the key thing here. Um, yeah, this one, otherwise, I think this looks good. If you'll notice, the text size on this resume is a little bit larger than the one that I covered earlier. It's a little bit more readable. Um, I would focus on making your resume look readable and I'd focus on having certain terms pop out so that if you were scrolling like this, okay, here's this person. Let's count to five. Okay, next, let's look at this person. Look at a couple of terms, count to five and so on. This is what recruiters do. Right. If you've got 200 resumes to go through, this is what you're going to be doing. So if I don't see obvious things popping out to me that say, oh, this person has what we're looking for, then uh, I'm going to be moving on. That's that's unfortunately what we're up against if we're sending a resume to a recruiter. It works differently if you're sending resumes to hiring managers, if you're doing networking or doing other things. OK, but if you're just sending resumes in to recruiters in response to posted jobs, this is the other side of the process that you're not seeing. So you have to win at this game. Hopefully that makes sense. Thank you so much for watching. You guys are awesome. If you have any questions, please, please leave them in the comments below. And uh, if you do have any more detailed questions, I do a live stream every week on Mondays called How to Get Hired where I answer just questions from people in the chat here on YouTube. So consider attending that and I can maybe help you out there. Thanks very much. You guys are awesome. I'll see you on the next one. Take care.